first of all, I, I try to never answer anything when I can't read the documents because usually the people reading the documents, unless they're an insurance agent or broker, and many of them don't understand what they're reading. But typically when, you have, when you're a professional person, you have errors and omissions insurance, and that takes the place of a bond. And see, that's another important thing. Most of the work that I do for my contractors is that they get contracts with the city or the county or what have you, and then we send them a certificate and they say, oh, we aren't going to take this, or you got to do this, or you got to do that. Well, if you don't have a person that really understands business insurance, insurance certificates, that's one of the hottest topics around. You can be uh, jerked around for you know a long, long period of time, and that's what I mean by most people don't have the right insurance, or they don't know it, or they don't understand it. I mean, it's, you, you can't just say, well, I'm going to go to the insurance agent down the street, and I'm going to have the right insurance. That doesn't mean, that, that doesn't make it so. So the regular $12,000 general bond that you have to get to even start a business. Right. She's talking about a license bond. What that means is that you have to have a, you're going to assume you're a general contractor, and to have a license, you have to put up a $12,000 license bond. Okay, so that's, that's not a performance bond. Okay. okay. I just see this vicious cycle, mm -hmm. this loop that general contractors, especially the smaller ones, get caught in. Uh -huh. And the fact that you can't get the larger jobs because you're uh -huh. not bonded. Mm -hmm. Sure. You can't get the bond because you have inadequate working capital. Sure. And it's just a vicious okay. cycle all sure. the time. And so sure. what you're trying to do is build up mm -hmm. to get the bond. Mm -hmm so that you can get the higher price projects right. so that you can make more money. Right. I think it's actually used against us because yeah. there's this silent thing that's mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. They're not bondable. That's and right. You, you're kept out of that arena of getting the larger jobs. Well, let me, <laughs> so how do, we, how do we break that cycle? Okay. People, when I tell them the truth, somebody else will tell them, oh, all you got to do is go down here and they'll do it for you. They're not going to do it for you. That's I mean, we're talking real money, and it's just like going to, going to Bank of America and saying, I want to borrow a million dollars. It's not going to happen unless you meet their qualifications. So you've got to start now if you want to get a million dollar bond six months or a year from now, okay? Now, the SBA, like I say, they do a wonderful job, but if you check into it, what you'll find is that the people who are getting those million dollar bonds, for the most part, they have a good credit and they have large assets. And so when you talk about African Americans, there's a whole litany of information I could give you. Uh, we have less assets and, and less uh, you know, money or, or liquid assets than almost anybody in America. And so it's much more difficult. And so somebody has to tell us or help us find out what to do now to start to build to do what you're saying. It's not going to happen overnight. I've been dealing with this for over 35 years. The questions you're asking, Contractors were asking that 35 years ago, and it's never been answered because the people given the answers don't know the answers. They're just business people or people writing memos, okay?